Yo, it's me, it's me, it's the SCOTT baby, and I'm back with my review of the 2010 film Iron Man 2, starring Robert Downey Jr., Scott Johansson, Sam Rockwell, and it's directed by John Favreau. Alright, <clears throat> so they announced Iron Man 2 was going to come out, and I said, okay, now they can do the Mandarin, you know? They didn't do it in the first one, but they introduced the Ten Rings, they gotta do it in this one. So who do we get? Whiplash. What? They show Mickey Rourke. I'm like, okay, so Mickey Rourke should be the Mandarin. No, they show Whiplash. And yes, if you're watching these in order, you know, you'll probably figure out I am leading somewhere with this. Oh, yes. So they have Mickey Rourke come out. He's Whiplash. Villain I never heard of. Then we get Justin Hammer, who I have heard of from the animated series. And he's sort of a background antagonist who gets arrested and then later says, Oh, you'll be seeing me really soon. And we have not seen him since. He's just been gone. It would make sense that they revealed he was part of Hydra, but he's just been gone since this film. What's the story? So now, two years after the events of the first Iron Man, Tony Stark as living a life, he is Iron Man, he's admitted. Actually, it doesn't take place two out two years afterward. In a year? I don't know. A year or something? I don't know. It's shortly after. I don't know. I'm sure when this takes place. The timeline's all over the place anyway. We'll talk about that when we get to Spider Man Homecoming, but a man named Ivan Vanko, who blames the Starks for his father's death, which neither one of them were around him when he died, so I don't know how it's their fault, but okay. Uh, apparently, Ivan Vengo's father helped with the design of the arc reactor, which the Starks have taken, you know, the claim for. And, yeah, I understand he's... he's angry about it, but I don't see how they caused his father's death. Then we get more of the Avengers stuff with Nick Fury having Tony Stark assess to see if he's if it, you know, if it'll work with him. And so we have the introduction of Black Widow for that. We got Happy Hogan again coming back. I didn't mention him in the first one, but John Favreau plays a character called Happy Hogan. Uh, Don Cheadle replaces Terrence Howard as uh, Rhodey, James Rhodes, and you know what? I think he's better. I think he wrote Donna Jr. They work better off each other. Uh, like, there's a scene in the end when it, uh, he's kissing Pepper Potts, and then uh, Rhodey says something. He goes, hey, can you leave me? He goes, I was here first. Get a roof. You know, it's funny. Um, and we got Agent Coulson back, of course, for S.H.I.E.L.D. And, like, they have... They have her... Um, Black Widow undercover is Natalie Rushman. I remember watching this and being like, that's going to be Black Widow. Because I knew Black Widow from cartoons and stuff. I'm like, it's going to be Black Widow. And sure enough, it was. It wasn't hard to figure out. Um, I hear people question the suit and the suitcase. And how it should be heavier to carry. Depends on what... There could be light metals. Depends on what kind of metal he used. And I think that was more of a shout out to the animated series where that's what he used was the suitcase that turned into a, a, a suit. So that was more of a shout out. And I like that. But they only use it here and never again, which angers me. Characters. You know, you got Robert Downey Jr. coming back. Like I said, he's great. And I mentioned some of the other ones, you know. Um... I remember when I first watched this, I was surprised that General Ross wasn't in it, because I was all thing he would talk General Ross at the end of Incredible Hulk, and he wasn't in here. The only thing I think it was at the time, he didn't have the rights to him. And then, we don't get to see General Ross until Captain America's Civil War, Civil War, Civil War, Civil War, where he's now Secretary Ross. Okay. As for the villain, Justin Hammer, as a villain... He's great for a background villain, like I said, and he kind of goes in the background. He wants to make 
you know, but he's not really a villain. Like I mentioned, there's villains and they're antagonists. He's an antagonist. Vanko, unfortunately, is the villain. And he's a one-dimensional villain. I want the revenge. I want the revenge. I get you. I want the revenge. I want the revenge. Basically, one note. That's all he wants. He wants revenge. He wants Tony Stark to be embarrassed because of... Supposedly, the Starks are responsible for the death of his father, which I still don't get. But he wants revenge. That, that's his one note thing. He wants revenge. And, uh... I can't mess it up there. Vanko Whiplash wants revenge. And Justin Hammer wants to embarrass Tony Stark. You get the trial of the beginning of this that makes no sense to me. So he created the Iron Man suit. And so now the government thinks they have the right to take it from him and use it how they want. That's not how it works. The government didn't issue him to make the suit. They didn't shell it any money for him to make the suit. Therefore they have no control over it. It's his suit. He made it. With his own stuff, with his own money, he made it. They have no right to control him over it, or take the suit, or have any rights to the suit at all. I'm, a, I'm sitting there watching it tonight, beginning of this, going, Oh yeah, the court case. Why is it a court case? I don't... Why would they even take this to court? He, Yes, he gets a subpoena from Cape Mara, and it's like, Why? It's his suit. He made it. He didn't use any of the government's money. He used his money to do it. It wasn't government funded. They have no right to even suggest that it belongs to them. So it makes no sense other than to introduce Justin Hammer. That's all I can think of. Um, and yeah, there's some good you know, fight scenes. The whole race car thing. Which, how many people died there by the way? They, re they introduced uh, Christine Everhart, reintroduced her again, the reporter from the first film that Tony slept with. And I have a feeling she was supposed to be used more than she was, but after this film, she just disappears. I felt like maybe in the original script, she was supposed to be used for more. And then she maybe they just decided to drop her. But for her to be a random, like, she was, I mean, she wasn't random, but she slept with Tony. She showed him something, and then she came back in this one, and she didn't really do anything other than talk to Justin Hammer and give him someone to flirt with. Other than that, nothing. Uh, taking back to that, that uh, what I was talking about with the race car, the racetrack scene, and the suit in the suit suitcase. When they go out there, Happy takes Pepper. Right onto the track with the suitcase. You know, I think Happy could have done it himself. Um, why did Pepper have to go there? Why put Pepper in any danger by driving out there? You're supposed to be a bodyguard. You're supposed to protect you. You're going to take her right onto the track where there's a guy wheeling around these electric whips and stuff. A lot of people say this is one of the worst in the MCU, and I don't get that. I mean, it's probably going to be at the bottom of my list just because there's so many better ones. And I get it. There's a lot of boring talk stuff. There's stuff where you see there's a lot of Tony Stark getting drunk where he really should have gone past that because the first one happened. But he regresses because he's he's uh, he's dying. And so he's got self-destructive behavior. If he goes, I'm going to die, I'm going to go out with a bang. But really, they could have taken the whole pop fight with plot point with the poisoning, because here's the thing. Tony Stark is a scientist. He's got brains. You think if he created something, if, if he created something to, I know he said he was in a pickle, but he created the first one in a cave. That could cause a, what do they call it? A, a, a contamination or whatever. But the fact that he later makes a brand new one and then, and then this thing is contaminating his blood. Doesn't make any sense. You think he would have perfected one that wouldn't do that. And after this film, it's just never mentioned again because he fixes it. I think that plot point could have been thrown out and we would have been fine. 
going back to him getting drunk and being the Tony from the beginning of the first film is just regressing the character that's not needed. Now, if they had used the drunken plot point after the Avengers, which they just used it as PTSD, which is all right, but here it's like regressing the character and it doesn't move the character forward anymore. And once we get there, he's just in the same place he was really by the end of the first one. And they, and and be, and this kind of ruins the whole point of him of the Avengers sting from the first one is then you have. Uh, Black Widow saying that Tony Stark isn't recommended for the Avengers program, but Iron Man is. He is Iron Man, so... But he's not recommended for Avengers Project because they decided to send her in there when he had this self-destructive behavior. He thought he was going to die. He was being drunk. And it's because they wrote that plot point that now that retroactively negates anything that they pointed out in the end. I'm here talking about the Avengers Initiative. And then you have someone in to assess him, but then you add the plot point where... He's getting drunk and it regrets. You see what I mean? It doesn't make any sense. Um, other than that, it's a decent film. Uh, I'm pointing out my favorite quote from each of the MCU films. And in this one, it's, Sir, can I ask you to step down from the donut? And there's, there's another one. No, maybe it's just that one. But, uh, oh, uh, I want my board. But that's not really my favorite. I just like him when he says that. I want my bird. I got you a bird. This is your bird. That's not my bird. I like that. But yeah, overall, I enjoy this. Uh, I'm going to give it a... I'll give it a 7. Because I enjoy it. I'd like it more than the third one. And we'll get to that. Because I'm waiting and waiting for something. That I've been waiting for since the first Iron Man. Only to be disappointed. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. But, yeah, uh, 7 out of 10 for me. So what are your thoughts on Iron Man? Duh. Let me know in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, I'm done for the night. It's getting late. Uh, I'll continue tomorrow with Thor. Uh, post credit scene. That's right, post credit scene. <coughs> in the actual film, we get Colson saying he was called to New Mexico. And then in the post credit scene, we have him pulling up, and they show Thor's hammer. So, yeah. There's po I gotta remember the post credit scenes because it's very important to this. So yeah, uh, so yeah, like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.